So check this out. Recently, I was reading an article online, and it was talking about, um, it was in Austin, and they were requesting to know the uh, critical uh, parts of the infrastructure. So basically, who didn't lose power? And, uh, and the power company didn't want to tell them who didn't lose power. Um, you know, they're saying it's protected information. And, and I thought, well, I, I see that every single day in the, the meters that are around here by the house. Um, as you can see right here, scrolling by, um, these Landis and Gear meters, they transmit as part of their messages um, the uptime. So, you know, so the power company knows outage information. And, and so the minute the power meter turns back on, it starts a counter and it, it starts transmitting. And as you can see from where I live, um, you know, it was 15 days ago was the last time uh, we lost power. All right, so you can see they transmit pretty frequently. Um, and if we look here on the other screen, so I'll show you a kind of an overview picture. I have a couple different computers running. Um, it helps with um, trying to write the code and everything. So I have one computer that runs a software defined radio. And then what it does is transmit the data over a network connection here so that I can just pull that network data, these little packets it sends into my block that I've written in GNU radio that allows me to decode it and do things like this where I show the number of days. The only reason this font is so big is because I also have a setup where I can just run everything on this laptop and I hop in my, uh, my Jeep and drive around and can see um, the difference between Encore and CoServe, the couple different power companies that are near me and um and when the last time power was out so there's some interesting data in here as well that um that i'll show you but so let's switch over to this computer here and so you'll see the kind of the the meat of how this thing uh of how it works okay so our main window here is showing the data coming in you can see that it shows the demodulation we'll take a look at that image real quick and i'll show you how it converts over to this data over here um, how it's picking apart the symbols, so whether our, uh, our, our values and our decoding is working correctly, and it's able to separate that out between a 1 and a 0, and um, a, uh, a, you know, a visual raster, so you can take a look at uh, the data, and, and this is where you can easily see some of these um, parts here that, um, that you'll see in the file, like all these FFs. So let's stop this. And so the blocks that we have here, um, it's a pretty complex um, flow graph, but um, it was all built um, by the, the guys at Sandia National Laboratories. So it's a frequency hopping um, detection, uh, basically deal that they've built. Um, I'll show, um, I'll put some links to the, to the site, the, the GitHub where they have all their uh, information. But there's only a few pieces you really need to, to tweak in this thing. It looks uh, complex as heck when you first open it up. Um, but uh, your sample rate, so what I'm doing is matching on the full um, 902 to 928 megahertz um, spectrum. So I can copy or, or basically um, get any information that is transmitted. Um, that's where the meters operate, that, uh, that frequency range. Um, a low-pass filter here that was adjusted to 9600 baud. So basically to try to do the very best job to pull out the, the information that's being transmitted at 9600 baud. So if you don't tune this properly, a lot of times what happens is just the, the data um, it doesn't, uh, doesn't pick it up correctly the, the way it's matching on it. Um, and then the, the final piece, kind of once you have that um, going good, is the sync word and so we'll see on the other um, the other site that I'll show you where I've been logging this information um, this is this is the part that all the meters transmit as their um, beginning part of their message that you uh, basically match to and then the rest of the packet that comes through is what gets decoded and so from this where we match on that sync word it comes down here to my Deframer that I've made that I'll talk a little bit about and also pushes out over the network to the other computer that we saw so So here's um, a screen grab. I can just show you real quick. So This is what we're trying to get a nice FM demodulation if you have the wrong um, Bog rates or something like that set 
what you'll see is that it looks like it's almost fluctuating up and down as it's not able to uh, to synchronize to the, the data properly. Um, and what that translates into is these soft symbols won't be nice and separated like this. They'll be kind of all mixed throughout. And so it can't tell what a one and a zero is and, and then you can't really get any good data. So, so here what you see is you see the one zero one zero pattern followed by a zero zero and then an FF. This is what we see over here. So the zero zero FF, um, I kind of put this back into the file so you can see it. And then a two A, a five five, um, the, the length of the packet, and then all these Fs, which, you know, here's that data there, and then you can see all the, all the Fs here, the six sets of them. Um, and the, the lows we see here and, and some other data are start and stop bits that we'll, we'll take a look at. So let's come over here. I've put the sync word and the header over here, so you can see that, the start bit and the stop bit on these, and the 2A. So this sync and header is basically from what I've determined, uh, every single transmission that comes from one of these uh, grid stream meters, this is the beginning of that transmission. In GNU Radio, I don't put quite as many um, of the beginning syncs on there. I put like one less, um, just because you you don't need all these. Because once you once you start matching on this, and then you match on what is the zero zero and FF, it looks like this if you break it into eight byte chunks because of that start and stop bit, um, then you're able to get, uh, you know, good data that comes out of it. Um, I also don't match on the 2A, I just stop at the FF and I, I begin inside of my own block to, to grab the 2A. Um, not sure why, just, uh, just the way I went about it. This is so far all the packets that have been observed. There's basically two main types. There's a 55 and a D5. These are the two that I've seen so far. Um, and I, I would have to say this is Landis and Gear grid stream with Encore and CoServe. Um, there's so many different power providers out here and they can use all different kinds of meters and uh, it's just, uh, just kind of crazy in Texas. Um, so these are the two that are near me so it's easiest to, to monitor the traffic. Um, and then between these, the 55 packet, it's broadcasting uh, the uptime, some other unknown information, uh, still can't figure out where the power data is actually part of this. So part of this video is kind of to show you what I've done. And then also I've posted some raw captures that anyone can take a look at, uh, you know, figuring that uh, they tell us that uh, there's nothing, uh, nothing to worry about in this data that's being transmitted. So I shouldn't have to worry about uh, posting uh, my own data online. Said the guy's name was Bob Lee Swagger. Never met the man, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, they said that all right. They also said that artificial sweeteners were safe, and WMDs were in Iraq, and Anna Nicole married for love. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and then the, the D5 packets here, these appear to be uh, maybe some kind of routing. Every single time one of these packets goes, there's always two meter IDs. Uh, I say always. There's always two slots for meter IDs. Um, and most of the time, you know, when I capture it, it's capturing my own meter ID and then another one that I'm assuming that maybe it's routing to uh, and it's trying to send the data there or perhaps it's relaying that meter's data back. I'm not quite sure which one it is. Uh, sometimes one of those fields will just be all FFs and that seems to be maybe some kind of broadcast packet. I've observed that when it looks like it's sending time. They all receive time and and uh, and they can synchronize to the time. Um, now, as far as the checksum goes, so all the data that's in my capture and all the data you see here on the screen, um, I can be certain that, that it's correct because I'm able to calculate the checksum for these different um, meter transmissions um, as part of that GNU radio block that you saw. So this is the, the C++ code that I used to do that. These are the two different um, initializing values that are used that I've seen between the different providers. Uh, it's a non-exhaustive list um, as there's a ton of providers out here, but it's relatively easy um, if you can capture the data to calculate this. Um, and I'll show that with um, some software called um, RevEng. Let's see if I have that up here. So 
So this, um, I'll put a link to the uh, to this in the description. So the way this works is, you you tell it the size of the checksum. So in this case, it's 16 bits, and you tell it to search with this dash s. And then what you do is you give it four at least four data packets. And so the data packets have to be. Uh, let's see here. It starts at this 29. So in this case, what it does is you can see here with this data, the header, the 00FF2A, the 55, the length, those aren't part of the CRC calculation. The CRC calculation starts from here across. And so what you give RevEng is basically this data here and you give it four packets and they, they wouldn't have to be all the same subtype of packets um, but they would have to all be from the same um, energy provider most likely um, because they seem to use different CRCs maybe as a way to filter data so that one doesn't receive the other ones and send it back in or something that's my only guess there so you give it these three things uh, or you know these these values plus four packets um, that end in the CRC right here um, the checksum and then when you hit enter what it will do is it will tell you some information it says okay yep the width is 16 that you provided this is the the poly um, and this is the initialization value that you have to give it um, in order to calculate the checksum properly and so in here that's what you see so I list the the two different ones that I've observed um, just by capturing packets um, and then trying them in RevEng. Uh, sometimes you have to try a few different packets. You know, if your packets are corrupted or something, you can't tell until you're able to figure out the CRC. So um, that can be a little bit of a trial and error. Um, but what I find is just turning down the gain in the software defined radio um, and just picking up strong packets that are near you seems to seems to work all right. Um, obviously, if you could just kind of camp out next to a meter, um, that would work as well if you knew which one you're interested in. Um, and then you'll see that I pass in the CRC uh, so that I can try different ones if I'm unsure about what the data is I'm receiving. Um, and then I just hard coded the, the poly in here. Um, so here I talk a little bit about the two different types of packets and then there's a bit of a breakdown. So, you know, what, what are the, the different pieces? You know, what have I figured out? Like in this case, that this is uptime, um, this is the meter ID and then other parts that just are unknown at this point. Um, and so I've been documenting that here so you can take a look. Um, so some, I guess, unique things that have been figured out so far, uptime, this is pretty interesting um, because, you know, like you saw right, um, right here, uh, you know, you can just drive around. I'll show you some data where I drove around the other day. Um, if we scroll up here a bit, um, here we go. So, this was just driving around. Um, you can see, you know, a few things here. So um, some of the areas I drove not too far away, they didn't experience any power outage at all. Um, these guys have been up the whole time. Um, it was kind of a business area that I was in, and then I drove near a hospital. Um, so they they've got real good power out at the uh, out of the hospital. Um, and then you can also see, depending on where I drove, let's scroll down a little bit here. Let's see. Yeah. So it's able to determine, you know, if it was Encore or CoServe. Um, and then, you know, the obviously the, the data is the same between them. The packets are a little bit different. Um, and I guess, you know, these providers, they have the ability to, to kind of um, put whatever they want there. So you can see I've tried to label this a little bit here. Like, so here's a 5.5 packet. So this kind of broadcasts uptime and some other information. These transmit like once a minute. Um, I would, you know, I would assume somewhere in here is power information. Can't figure it out uh, for the life of me though. So, um, just kind of posting this, hoping some other people can, can uh, chime in if they've got any ideas. But Encore, you'll notice they use some kind of special identifier here, and it seems to be different for each meter that I've noticed. Um, and it seems to make some kind of logical sense. Like in my neighborhood, these increment one at a time by house. So it almost feels like it's a location identifier of some sort, but it is some kind of unique ID, um, perhaps that they pass to these other providers that are on top of Encore. So like, uh, 
you know, Gritty and these other ones you've heard of that, that are the retail energy providers. Perhaps this is some unique ID that goes to them. It's not this ESI ID um, that you might be thinking about if you know about this stuff. At least I can't figure out a way that correlates this in any kind of meaningful way to that, but it is a different unique identifier. But then when you look at CoServe, you'll notice that um, this ID is just the same as the meter ID. So, you know, they're they're kind of an energy collective. They don't you can't there's not another provider on top of them that sells you energy. They're just kind of an all in one uh, cooperative, they call it. And so for them, they don't use a separate identifier here. Um, there's also some other things that are different, like this sum value here is 50 five zero on uh, CoServe. It's FE or uh, five zero on Encore. It's FE on CoServe. Um, this identifier here seems to be different and and the same in all the transmissions but different between these two providers um yeah just some different things like that that you'll see in this um in this data um and so if we kind of keep going down these are these other d5 types of packets i've talked about there's a lot of information in some of these they can be very long um and you'll see that in this data capture file that i put here so this is 48 hours worth of data from my meter um, that is anywhere where my meter ID is in there. So whether it's in this meter ID 2 slot, if it's in the meter ID 1 slot, if it's a D5 or a 5.5 packet, anything that it had my meter ID for 48 hours, I captured that data. So there's quite a bit of data in there. Um, and then also what I did at the same time was at these different times here, which you'll see in this file as you scroll through, this file looks like this. So it has the packet and then it has the date and time stamped on the end that the packet was received. So you can go through and space it out and do whatever you want. And at different times here, what I did was I went over to this Smart Meter Texas site. I connected in and what I did was I clicked this get current meter read. And what that does is send a message out to the meters. So what I'll do over here on this other computer is I'll filter by just my meter ID. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're going to check the CRC. We're only going to show stuff that has my meter ID in it, any packet type and any packet length. So it'll load up here. So you can see right here, here's that sync um, that we're matching up like I showed you before. And so now it's receiving a ton of information. You can see it's matching on all kinds of things, but we're not really showing anything. All we're showing here is ones that have my meter ID. So now I'll click on this get current meter read and watch what happens. So it's processing, you know, it takes about 10 to 15 seconds. And what you notice is the meter gets, the meter responds with this information. And generally this is what is um, seen. These 1C um, packets, the length of them seems to be 1C that it, it responds back with. So let's see where it is here. So in this case, it's in the first spot and this is the second meter ID. And in the other case, um, we're in the second spot. And then here comes the the values that it read back. Now, you know, here's the kicker. Uh, I have no idea how this information here translates into that. So this data here is cap is basically I click that button at these times and log the data here in this chart. So that when you look at this file, you can see what my current meter read was, um, what the on-demand energy uses was and see, you know, if uh, if anyone has any ideas of, of how to decode that. Let's take a look at one of the things that I thought was real interesting. So, um, you know, the uptime is one of the things that's interesting. The other thing is in this packet type here, this D5, that's um, the type is 51, the subtype and the length is 47. In here um, is the actual time. Like, and, and it, took a, it took a little bit to figure this out, but if we copy this value, and come up here to um, this epoch uh, converter 
Um, you can put in this time, it's a hex value, so we'll start it with 0x and, and put it in there and click the button. And what we get is, in our time it says that this translates to Monday, March 1st at 11.50 a.m. and 10 seconds. And if we come back to this file, hey, sure enough, it was logged Monday, March 1st. Um, so, you know, so that's when I knew, okay, all the meters, they are aware of, of the exact time. Um, and then they do keep track of uptime and they do transmit different information when they first um, start up the power outages helped with figuring out um, the uptime portion because you'll see here what I did was I was logging um, as the power was out and when the power was restored what I saw was this value here reset and started counting up again um, and I was able to figure out that these were seconds from the time-stamped files um, that I was creating um, and then realize that this is basically the uptime. So every time there's an outage, it has to be more than like a second or two, um, but when there's, you know, an outage that lasts a little bit and the meter basically loses power and starts back up, um, then this counter is reset. And so, you know, the, so the, the power company knows that, you know, the last time it was pulled, if you pulled your own meter for some reason, you know, it would transmit a message saying that it had lost power and then also this counter would be reset so even if you were somehow able to mask that message that was sent back this counter itself would also be reset so they would know that the meter had lost power at, at some point for some reason who knows why um, so there's a bunch of you know and this is just kind of the very basic information i figured out there's all this rest of this stuff that uh, you know maybe it's power quality information or something else who knows so in the block here we saw the filter by by meter ID and how um, how I can capture that. So this is how this data was captured over here. So this is just uh, this is the file itself, and it's uh, you know it's like I said it's 48 hours worth. They transmit generally at you know once a minute or so. So there's just a lot of data in here, and then you can see you know about every 15 to 30 minutes at the latest, it looks like it's reporting back its power usage if it's not in these packets. These might just be some kind of ping uptime kind of packets um, that are just sent across the network. Uh, I don't know. Um, but, you know, like I said, I can't seem to see anything in here that would be related to power utilization. There are fields that change, but none of them so far that I've been able to correlate to anything related to power. So here's the, um, the Sandia Laboratories uh, PDU utilities and frequency hopping spread spectrum utilities. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie, it, uh, it, it takes quite a bit to set up um, GNU Radio and get these tools to work. Uh, there's a number of things that you have to compile and then all these different dependencies. Um, but, you know, it's the, the cool thing is literally all this work has pretty much been done um, by other people. So the piece that, that I have done is to make this deframer right here so that I can actually select different meter IDs the, you know the code that I have is in various states of uh, uh, you know disarray um, as I'm trying to kind of figure out all these different things and just dumping debugging information to the console um, so it's not a proper uh, GNU radio block I would say um, but it definitely helps with them um, with the debugging and so you know if we take a look at um, at what at what it is that I have so far um, you know there's a part that calculates the the CRC um, it comes in here it, it's kind of broken into a few pieces right now so the first piece is I just determine what the packet type is what the packet length is and then I use that data to come down here and decode the rest of the packet um, and then in this version of the the code there's kind of multiple versions a different one on the laptop that I was using to to specifically decode how many days the meter has been up but in this version um, I just kind of create a couple different values to tag the the meter IDs and I tag them based on the type of packet they are um, where they live they're in kind of different spots but the cool thing is in a d5 packet they always seem to be in in these two um, locations and in a 5.5 packet um, you know with the caveat the 5.5 packet that's a length of 23 hex there in this spot and the 28 packet that you'll see in some of the things I kind of just ignore that um, and then these are just filters based on 
you know what you enter into that um, GNU radio block so if you enter zeros for any values it just lets everything through so I can log everything and then some of the stuff I'd been writing to files um, so I was saving all the data um, as it was coming in for a kind of a bigger analysis so I think that's all for the um, protocol analysis at this point um, as I figure out more, I'll, I'll create another video and, and talk about that and, uh, and definitely um, update the wiki so that, uh, so that we can take a look at kind of what's been figured out. You know, the, I'd say the holy grail at this point is the actual power utilization. And uh, like I say, for the life of me, you know, it's like, you know, they, they literally have one job and, uh, and, and I don't know what that information is. So I'll be, uh, pulling my hair out until uh, I get that figured out. Till the next one.